module number 12 section 1 statistical hypothesis testing in the first module section number 3 we learned about scientific methodology uh, it has been developed by francis bacon's novum organum onwards and as you know scientific claims have to be independently verifiable and it has to be falsifiable a concept called falsifiability of karl popper so science progresses through unconventional revolution of ideas that is something called paradigm shift of kun the two ideas are contrasting and contradictory but still there is how curiosity driven basic science and utility driven science progresses the current gold standard of scientific methodology for experimental science is statistical hypothesis testing so hypothesis testing is part of the inferential statistics so statistics can uh be divided into two in uh, you know it depends on what utility we are doing with the data one is called descriptive statistics the other one is called inferential the inferential means that you are making some meaningful conclusions uh, inferences from the data set especially with underlying probability distribution you know so that is called inferential so in the inferential statistics this statistical hypothesis testing is an essential part one simple analogy we can see that let us say we have a, a prior hypothesis that are you lucky let's find it out so if you are lucky or not let's do a coin toss experiment so let us toss the coin for 10 times and if you get six times or more head in it then you are deemed to be lucky so that is our hypothesis if you are getting six times or more head in this coin toss experiment you are lucky if you are getting 5 or 4 you are not lucky 6 or more means 6 is also lucky 7 is lucky 8 is lucky what is so special about 6 there is nothing special it can be 5 also but i arbitrarily decided to be 6 so this arbitrary value or a cut off or threshold value is known as the threshold or significance level okay now you do the coin toss and you got for example 6 head and 4 tails and what will you infer from this result of course you are lucky had it been five head and five tail then you will infer it to be not lucky so beforehand there is a hypothesis and you are testing the validity of that hypothesis that is defined based on an arbitrary threshold value and that is exactly how scientific uh, uh, you know statistical hypothesis testing works so what are the salient features of it threshold value is defined part of the experimental design so you cannot change after for example i defined six times or six uh, times head or more head in that 10 times toss and after tossing you got only four heads and later you change that threshold value to four times or later uh, more so that to call yourself as lucky that is cheating so that's the same thing happens in uh, statistical hypothesis testing you cannot change the significance level after you come up with your data so define the alpha that is a first step so statistical hypothesis testing has got four parts and these are sequentially done the first part is to define the alpha that is threshold p value second step is to define the null hypothesis or ho or h0 third is to define the alternative hypothesis or ha fourth and final step is to calculate the p value and decide the fate of the hypothesis so that is how it works it's a four step sequential process i told you significance level should be defined first and then null and alternate hypothesis must be defined so finally based on the obtained p value the fate of two hypotheses that is null and alternative hypothesis has to be decided So what is this threshold p value or alpha or significance level these are all same thing threshold p value is interchangeable it's all synonyms you have to define a threshold p value or significance level before you're doing an experiment ideally you know you should actually uh, consider this value based on you know uh, what will happen the consequence of the falsely finding a difference that means false positive or missing the true difference or false negative what are the consequences of it i will be explaining more in detail in the next module next section of the same module but in practice usually we all do that the alpha is we set at 0.05 so that is what most of the the fields especially in biology uh, the the alpha is set at 0.05 
So what does that mean? 0 0.05 means 95 percentage confidence level. If you remember our discussion about the confidence level and confidence interval in one of the earlier sessions, you might know that it is again it's an arbitrary fix 95 percentage confidence level. So how these two are related 0 0.05 means in probability that if you convert that into the percentage it is 5 percentage. So 5 percentage is a significant that is you know the extreme score. So that means 100 minus 5 is 95. So both are ex ex exactly similar. So suppose mean is 11 mark for example I conduct a class test and you get an average mark of 11 marks with standard deviation of 4 marks. So if a student get 2 marks then that value is considered to be significant at this 0 0.05 uh, significance level. You know why? Because this is beyond 2 sigma. So what is the sigma here? Sigma means population standard deviation. Here the standard deviation is 4. So times 2 that is 8. So 11 minus 8 and 11 plus 8. So in between that is considered to be normal score. But beyond this that, that comes the tail part of the Gaussian distribution and these parts are termed to be the significant score. So that is why it is us unusual to get a student 2 mark or 1 mark or greater as well. So it's two tail test. I will explain to you about the difference between one tail and two tail in subsequent module. Alpha means probability of incorrectly rejecting the null hypothesis if the null hypothesis is actually true. In other words, uh, you know, fraction of false positives out of all results were null hypothesis is actually true. So that is the formal definition of the alpha. By the way, what is null hypothesis? That is a default position in any statistical significance testing. So nothing is new or nothing is happening or if you are comparing the means of two groups, the null hypothesis is that the means are same or there is no difference in the means of the two groups or there is no correlation or no regression is happening or the line is straight or the proportion is 1. So all these are something called the null hypothesis. So null hypothesis is generally assumed to be true till evidence indicates otherwise and it's pronounced as H0 or H null or HO or H0. So all these are null hypotheses. So if you are comparing the two means, the null hypothesis is that the two populations have the same mean. So mean 1 is equal to mean 2 or mean 1 minus mean 2 is equal to 0. So that is the null hypothesis. So when you are analyzing an experiment, the null hypothesis is usually the opposite of the experimental hypothesis. So experimental hypothesis is the reason that you do that experiment or that is also known as uh, alternative hypothesis. So your experimental or alternative hypothesis is the reason that you did that scientific experiment. So that the treatment changes the means, right? That is what you would like to know it. So the null hypothesis is usually opposite to that experimental uh, hypothesis. So null hypothesis is that the two populations have the same mean or the treatment has no effect on. Alternative hypothesis on the other hand is also known as H1 or HA is the postulation that something is new is happening in your experiment. The means if you are comparing the means of the two groups means are not equal. Proportion is not one. So there is a correlation between the two variables. So those kind of things are known as a hypothesis are known as alternative hypothesis. The reason that you do a scientific experiment. So it's not alternate but it's alternative. Also known as the research hypothesis or experimental hypothesis. What are the possible outcomes of a hypothesis testing? Do not reject the null hypothesis. If the p-value is higher than the threshold p-value or significance level you know or alpha. So if the, the obtained p-value is higher than the threshold p-value which is usually 0 0.05 then your conclusion is do not reject the null hypothesis. So second outcome is to reject the null hypothesis if your p-value is less than the threshold p-value which is what most of the researchers aiming for to get the low p-value so that they can reject the null hypothesis to say that their experimental hypothesis is kind of fine. So outcome is not all about alternative hypothesis. It's only about the null hypothesis. So two kinds of 
conclusions that you are drawing is only about the null hypothesis because a statistical hypothesis testing is only testing the validity of the null hypothesis. One example is that average heights of the mango trees that is mean plus or minus standard deviation with n of 10,000 the sample size is 10,000 in two villages. One village is called Korom village. Uh, so the Korom village value is 530 plus or minus 100 centimeter is the heights uh, you know the mean plus or minus standard deviation of the mango trees while the other village is Kudda village it is 380 plus or minus 90 centimeter. So how do you compare the means of these two groups? The first uh, step here is to define the threshold P which is let us say it's 0 0.05 that is the, the arbitrary threshold P value in most of the sciences. Step 2 is to define the null hypothesis. In this case if you are comparing the means of the two groups the null hypothesis is always mean of the group 1 is equal to the mean of the group 2. Third step is to define the alternative hypothesis. So that is just opposite of the null hypothesis. That means the mean of 1 is not equal to mean of the other one. And then the calculate the p-value and decide the fate of the experiment. So I'm not telling you how to calculate the exact p-value. So we will have to do that with a standardized test like students t-test that we will be covering in the next module, one of the later modules here. So once you get your p-value or probability value, you can decide it. Does that p-value is higher than 0 0.05 or lower than 0 0.05? If it's less than 0 0.05, then you are, you know, you are concluding that it is significant but if it's higher than 0 0.05 then you are not rejecting the null hypothesis. So you can do appropriate statistical test to calculate the p-value one example would be the student's t-test. So if the p-value for example is 0 0.04 which is lesser than 0 0.05 which is our alpha or threshold p-value then you have to state that reject the null hypothesis and that the difference is statistically significant. Remember always put statistically before you write the significant. So if you simply say it is significant that is ambiguous. Is it scientifically significant or biologically significant? That is not what it meant. It just means that it is statistically significant. If the p-value is around let us say 0 0.06 which is greater than the threshold then you have to state that you do not reject the null hypothesis and the difference is not statistically significant. So that is how you to decide the, uh, the fate of the statistical uh, hypothesis testing. By the way, what is p-value? Which is a probability value that answers the following question. If the null hypothesis is true, what is the probability that the random sampling uh, would have led to the differences as large as or larger than what is observed in the current study? So that is what the p-value uh, means you know which is kind of uh, tough to comprehend we will cover more about the p-value in the next module. It is an example of an argument by contradiction in reasoning and uh, logic. So if the p-value is higher than the threshold p-value which is 0 0.05 you cannot conclude that the null hypothesis is true. No that is not possible. All you can do is to conclude that you do not have sufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis. To reject or not to reject null hypothesis is what is being tested in statistical hypothesis testing. So it is kind of trickier to comprehend to you know non-logicians and non-mathematicians so that is why most of the scientific community still do not understand really what the p-value uh, actually signifies. One analogy would be juror pronouncing that the verdict is uh, you know guilty or not guilty. So the person is guilty or is it actually a non guilty. So but she can never pronounce that the accused is innocent that is not the jury uh, juror pronounce it you know the innocent or not innocent that is beyond the scope of what a juror can uh, say in reasonable judiciary. So the conclusion is also very crisp because nobody likes uncertainty. For example she cannot say that I do not know or probably he is guilty so those kind of uh, ambiguity is removed. That is the one reason that uh, you know this statistical hypothesis testing is being uh, practiced in sciences to remove the ambiguity to make the crisp decisions. So this crispness of the statistical hypothesis testing is often criticized as the threshold p-values are often arbitrary and rejecting the null hypothesis with the borderline p-values makes actually no sense at all. So if the obtained p-value is very low 
or moderately low or borderline low so different kinds of wordings usually say if it is less than 0 0.0001 which is quite low then you can say extremely significant then there is something called very significant then slightly significant uh, if it is 0 0.01 to 0 0.05 and uh, as you can see in the screen these words are also indicated in asterisks so if you if it's really extremely significant you can put four star and if it's only borderline significant you can put only one star so just by looking the star uh, values you can see that is it really significant or is it only borderline significant it's actually very important to look at the exact p value rather than just looking at the less than 0 0.05 doesn't mean anything less than 0 0.05 means it could be 0. Point uh, you know 044 which is quite borderline as well what is the relevance of scientific hypothesis testing so statistical hypothesis testing is a gold standard for experimental science and scientific methodology any scientific experiment to get recognized the investigator has to validate the research with results have to be validated with scientific methodology or scientific statistical hypothesis testing for drug candidates to pass the FDA regulations, statistical hypothesis testing is mandatory with a threshold p-value of 0 0.05. So this is one of the reasons that why most of these alternative medicines cannot pass through that rigorous uh, p-value of 0 0.05. So it fails to market as an evidence-based drug. So in summary, statistical hypothesis testing is a four-step sequential process. Significance level should be defined first the null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis finally based on the obtained p-value the fate of two hypotheses is decided significance level should be chosen based upon the tolerance limit of the two types of error type 1 or false positive or type 2 that is false negative that we are going to uh, see that in the next module it is cheating to change the decided significance level or changing the sample size and other numerous ways that you know to reduce the p-value that is p-value hacking we will be covering up later argument by contradiction is a logic employed in statistical hypothesis testing so if the p-value is lesser than threshold p-value you cannot conclude that the alternative hypothesis is true all you can do is to reject the null hypothesis that is only uh, probability that is uh, possible out of this statistical hypothesis testing thank you